Hello, Physics 277 students and anyone else out there on YouTube who may be watching this video. Today we're going to continue with our series of videos on editing using the GNU Emacs editor from the Linux command line. And last time we covered some basics of how to open a file up to enter some text into it and to save the text. But I want to quickly recap some of the things we learned there because this is all new material to you and I want to make sure that you understand that. So let me just open a file here. Uh, we'll call recap.txt. So I'll do that and I'm now in Emacs. Just some terminology. This section that's in black up here at the top, right below the line where it says file, edit options, whatever, is referred to as the main buffer, all right? And we're gonna be able to swap back and forth to have different files in that main buffer. We'll get to that later. This gray line down below here, I may have referred to as the status line, and I often do, but it actually technically is what's called the mode line. It's gonna be very important. It tells us a lot about what's going on, and we'll see various ways that we can do things. We can also use this little black space down here at the bottom, and this is what's called the mini buffer. All right? I also may have referred to this as um, uh, some other usage in the first video, but it's technically called the mini buffer. And now we're gonna make use of that today in this uh, video. So just quickly to recap some of the control sequences we learned last time, we can type in text here uh, anywhere, and we learned that in order to manipulate things, we would have to move around in the file. We could do that with the arrow keys, or we could do that with control sequences. And let me repeat what those were. So control X, control S, all right? I didn't type control there. I'm typing C dash uh, to represent control and C dash S here to represent uh, the, um, the control and S. This was, equivalent to basically saving the file, save the file, all right? And control X or control C was equivalent to exit Emacs, Emacs, a little typo there. Okay, we could also move around using the arrow keys or we could use control sequences to do that. So we could say control N, which was equivalent to move to the next line. Control P, which was equivalent to moving to the previous line. Control F, which was move forward one space. Oops, and control B, which was move backward one, one space. Okay, so this is the control sequences. These are, I should say, these are the control sequences that we've covered so far. Um, we're gonna learn a lot more of those coming up, but these are very important ones to know. Now, again, you can get away with using the arrow keys if you're on a keyboard that supports the arrow keys, right? But if you're on some keyboard where, for whatever reason, the system has the arrow keys mapped to something else, you may not be able to do that. So it's good practice to actually learn these, and they're pretty easy. Control N for next, Control P for previous, Control F for forward, Control B for back. And by the way, these will be the same character sequence, uh, control sequences you can use in the bash shell to move back and forth through the uh, history of commands that you've previously um, executed and to move back and forth on a line to edit those commands. So they're very useful to learn. And again, when we do control sequences, when we type control N, we're holding down the control key and then hitting N while we hold down the control key. So you're really hitting two keys at once, right? And when we have a sequence like control X, control S, first we hold down the control key and hit X and then hold down the control key and hit S. Okay, so you'll see these abbreviations, uh, control X and control S quite a lot. You'll see the C, capital C dash and capital C dash here. Whenever you see capital C dash in the Emacs literature, it means hold down the control key. 
Another thing that we're going to learn this time are escape sequences using something called the Meta key. You'll see in the literature things like M dash X, capital M dash X, right? And this means escape X. And the difference here is that when you have escape sequences, you do not hold down the escape key. You hit the escape key and then hit the X, right? You don't hold the escape key down like you do the control key. Now, why is it M? It stands for Meta, right? There are some keyboards out there that have a special Meta key on them, right? They're very uncommon. I haven't seen one for many years. You may have one, but I think it's highly unlikely. But whenever in the Emacs literature you see capital M dash, that is shorthand for escape, all right, for most keyboards that you will ever encounter. So you'll hold down the escape, or you'll hit the escape key and then type whatever follows that. We're going to learn an escape sequence or two here today coming up. All right, so that's just a quick recap of what we covered last time. Let me save this. How would I do that? Type Control X, Control S, it's saved. And I'll exit by typing Control X, Control C. And now I'm back in the command line. And if I do an LS, you'll see I have that file recap.txt. Okay, let's edit a different file this time. We're going to edit one that is a Fortran 90 source code file. And I'm going to use this to illustrate some of the interesting features of Emacs here. So let's Emacs to edit a file, hello world.f90. It's sort of a tradition that whenever you write your first program in a new language, that first program is called hello world, and what it should do is write out to the screen hello world. This tradition got started in the C programming language in a book uh, by Kernigan and Ritchie that basically introduced this as a very first program. People now do it in every language and it's a good practice. It just gets you understanding how you would write the basic program in that language and how you would get it to execute. So we're gonna, not going to cover Fortran here today, but we'll just use this as an example. Now, when I do that, I'm back in. Here's my main buffer up here. Here's my mini buffer down here. Here's my mode line here. One thing you'll notice if you're observant, it's something different here. And there's something here that says F90 on the mode line. I just highlighted it right there. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it's in a different mode now. Emacs is a very smart editor. When I entered a file name that ended in .fo8, Emacs recognized that and it said, aha, that is going to be a source. Uh, um, I actually typed F90 there. Let me back out of here. Let's do this again. Uh, Emacs F08. Sorry, there we go. Um, now we're in hello world.f08. Um, you'd recognize that I'm writing a Fortran code in the, according to the Fortran 2008 standard, and it puts me in a mode that basically can deal with that particular language. And in this case, in Emacs, that's what's called the F90 mode. Why is it called F90, not F08 mode? Because starting with the Fortran 90 standard, the Fortran language format changed. It became what is called a free format of Fortran. So it was much less restrictive in how I could enter statements on lines and so forth. And so Emacs puts me in a mode there where it will do things that will be helpful for writing code in that language. Let me write a little code here and I'll illustrate what's going on. You're not going to understand these Fortran statements. We'll cover them later but this just illustrates how Emacs works. So I'm gonna start by typing the line program, hello, underscore world. Oh, I mistyped world. Okay, then implicit none, write star comma star, quote, hello world, exclamation point, stop, zero and end program hello world so that will end up being our first program in fortran we're not going to worry about the details of this today but i'm just using it to illustrate how emacs edits things so one of the things you may notice here that it did emacs did something very interesting it's colorized the code here and that's because in this f90 mode it understands Fortran language syntax and it's highlighting certain things with different colors. For example, all the keywords in the Fortran language like program, implicit, write, stop, and are all colored in light blue. 
things like this string right here, which is a character string. If you come from another language, you know how to program already, but in Fortran it's called the character literal, is colored in beige and so on. And that syntax colorization basically is very helpful when you look at the code that you're working on here and it allows you to see various features in it. So that's a very nice feature that Emacs has. Another feature that Emacs did is it indented these lines here between the program statement here and the end program statement here, each two spaces. Now, you may or may not like that feature. I don't particularly like that feature. So we can turn that off in Emacs. How are we gonna do that? Well, we have to introduce an escape sequence. And this is one of those ones where I'm going to hit the escape key. So I'm gonna hit the escape key followed by X, all right? And it put me down here in the mini buffer. And now I can type in a command to Emacs from this mini buffer. And the command I'm going to type in here is electric indent mode. This automatic indenting, all right, is on, turned on in the Emacs buffer when it sees that it's editing a Fortran source code in modern form. I don't particularly happen to like it, all right? Everybody's got their own particular style that they program in. I don't typically indent two spaces here automatically on these things, and a lot of times you'll find yourself wrestling with it. This is also true when you get to C++. It's got a specific mode. Emacs has a specific mode for C++ that you may find yourself wrestling with, and you can turn it off with this electric indent mode switch, all right? And the same thing if you edit Python language, uh, Python programs with uh, Emacs, you'll end up doing the same thing. So now when I write this, let me write this from scratch again. Now when I say program hello world and implicit none, it doesn't automatically indent and write star comma star quote hello world and stop zero and end program hello oops hello world okay it didn't automatically indent now all right and that's because i turned that electric indent mode off if i want to turn it back on again i'll hit escape x which will put me down in the mini buffer again and i'll type electric indent mode oh, oh i mistyped there I didn't. And one interesting thing is basically Emacs also will do command completion. So now that I've typed electric indent, it knows, right, that this is, I'm going to type the electric indent mode command. And if I hit tab here again, or put an M in there and hit tab, it'll automatically complete that. So it saves me a lot of typing. All right. So now electric indent mode is enabled again. If I start typing again, it will indent as it feels is appropriate you may not feel the same kind of indentation is needed. So you can turn that on or off. Another feature you might wanna turn on and off within Emacs is it has to do with basically whether you're gonna insert text or overwrite text. What do I mean by that? Well, okay, let's put my cursor up here at the beginning of this right line and let me start typing X, Y, Z. When I typed X, Y, Z, it inserted it in and shifted everything over to the right. You may not like that. You may want to overwrite. <clears throat> How could you make that happen? Let me delete that and start again. Well, I could hit the insert key and you'll see down here in the mini buffer, it says overwrite mode enabled in current buffer. So what that means is now if I type X, Y, Z, it will overwrite. Let me show you X, Y, Z and it overwrote the W, R, I, right? If I want to toggle that off, I hit insert again and it'll say overwrite mode disabled in current buffer. And this time, if I go back and I type W, R, I, it'll shift everything to the right. So I can turn that on and off with the insert key. But what happens if you're on a keyboard where you don't have an insert key, like maybe it's a very small laptop, compact laptop um, keyboard, right? What can you do? Well, you can hit escape, at, escape X, which puts you down in the mini buffer, and I can type overwrite mode, and it will, uh, I mistyped overwrite mode, and it will enable it. If I again hit escape X and do overwrite mode, it'll toggle it off. All right, so I can toggle the overwrite mode on and off this way. Okay, so 
this illustrates a few features um, that we wanted to talk about here. Um, one thing I will tell you about that'll be very useful. When you're entering things, escape X will always take you down to the mini buffer where you can type in commands. Perhaps you start something that you want to um, you know, change. There's something called query replace, and then you it prompts you for th something you want to replace, and you decide, I don't want to do that. What can I do? Well, there's an abort command that you have, an abort sequence that you have in Emacs to basically stop something like that. And you can type control G and it will quit whatever you're doing right there and take you back into the main buffer. All right, so that's a very useful thing. Control G is a very useful command to know. All right, so we've made these changes. Let's save them. How would I do that? I'll type control X, control S, and I'll type control X, control C to exit. So that's all we're gonna cover this time. We'll talk a little bit more about Emacs capabilities in the next video. So look to the link to the upper right of this screen. Otherwise, we will see you here for the next video, which will be video three.